Welcome to Sideline Sports, where we give you an up-close and personal look at the teams, coaches, and athletes that make up the Columbia Basin. Here's your host, Jeff Slakey. Welcome to Sideline Sports. You know, trap hunting is a big deal in the Columbian Basin. Big Bend awarded the President's Cup and falls to Wenatchee Valley. Deja Vu haunts Eastmont, favors Moses Lake in district rematch. And our game of the week, it's Gonzaga Prep at Moses Lake Football. This portion of Sideline Sports is being brought to you in part by... Alstead Real Estate, a name you can trust. There are a lot of local gun clubs, each filled with enthusiastic members. Here's a look into why they're important. This isn't your typical sport, but trap shooting in the Columbia Basin is the most popular non-team sport besides golf. I Viper One News stopped by and partook in the activities happening at the Marlin Gun Club on Thursday. Gun clubs are host to various shooting events. Marlin Gun Club President Doug Starkle explained why gun clubs such as his are so important to the community. It becomes a real close-knit family, you might say, as time goes by. <clears throat> I've been doing it since 1969. Uh, I've been shooting competition, the AT, which is Amateur Trap Shooting Association, for over like 35 years. And you get to know people from all aspects of the country, you know. And it's, you really become family after a period of time. Trap shooting season is coming up with competition starting in January, with Sundays being the best day to visit Marlin Gun Club because that's the day they have the kitchen up and running. Gun clubs like this were meant to build people and encourage them to become better shooters. After some coaching, even a city boy like me was able to hit a few clay pigeons. I'm Alan Chikoski, Fry Fiber One Sports. Sideline Sports is being brought to you in part by Cheryl Kono's Farmers Insurance is your local one-stop shop for all of your insurance needs. Whether it's auto, home, life, business, and farm and ranch, Cheryl and Farmers are here for you. She'll work to put together a package that fits your needs no matter how big or small. She's right here in Afreitas. Please stop by for a free quote at 858 Basin Street Southwest or call 509-754-2550. On a night that was all about Big Bend, the Wenatchee Valley Knights were the ones who brought home the victory. The stands were full on Friday night for Big Bend Volleyball hosting Wenatchee Valley. Big Bend sophomores were recognized for their commitment to the team before the game. Later during the intermission, Big Bend was awarded the President's Cup, and Mac President Marco Azerdia was on hand to award Big Bend the trophy. This is the second year in a row in which Big Bend has won the Cup and the third time in five years. The Cup is awarded to the school with the student-athletes attaining the highest marks in the classroom. During the game, Big Ben and Lady Vikings came out fired up. Big Ben took an early lead in the first, but Wenatchee Valley slowly came back and took the set 25-22. The Vikings kept up their enthusiasm going into the second set, but it was the Knights coming out on top, winning 25-20. Wenatchee Valley came out relying on their mission, rested, and made quick work of the Vikings 25-13 completing the sweep three sets to zero. Big Ben finished the season with a 1-31 overall record. Wenatchee Valley finishes at 16-16. and I'm Adam Chikoski for iFiber One Sports. This portion of Sideline Sports is being brought to you in part by... Moses Lake and Eastmont meet in Lions Field for the second time this season, and the results nearly identical. It was a do-or-die situation last night when the number four-seeded Eastmont Wildcats came to town to take on the number three-seeded Moses Lake Chiefs. The Chiefs swept the Wildcats this season, winning 4-0 in Moses Lake and skating by 3-2 at Eastmont. Moses Lake replicated the game they had earlier this season by scoring fast and scoring often. The Chiefs went into halftime with a 3-0 lead. The score stayed there for the majority of the second half until the Chiefs scored one more goal with less than three minutes in the match to have the final score 4-0. After the game, team captain and senior Abby Rathbun was proud of the way her team played, noting how similar the game was to the victory earlier in the season at Lions Field. That's what happened the first time we played Eastmont um, here. Um, we just jumped on them early and it was the same score as, um, as the first time we played them. That was our goal going into this game was just to jump on them first and you know give them no hope. The Chiefs will now advance to play the West Valley Rams at their stadium. The Rams lost to Wenatchee last night 2-1. Winner of the game will advance to the state playoffs while losers will be on the outside looking in. I'm Adam Chikoski, Fright Fiber One Sports. 
Checking the scoreboards in football. West Valley 51, Afreda 12, Royal over LaSalle 48-7, and Warden beats East Valley 36-7. In soccer, West Valley 2, Moses Lake 1, Wenatchee 2, West Valley 1, and in a shootout it was Clarkston 2, Afreda 1. In volleyball, Eastmont 3, Wenatchee 2, Afreda 3, East Valley 1, and Prosser 3, Afreda 1. Last time we saw the Chiefs, they were shutting out the best offense in the Big Nine. This week brings an even taller order, hosting the Gonzaga Prep Bullpups. Gonzaga Prep has an impressive season, only tallying two losses, just like the Chiefs. One of the losses for the Bullpups, a triple overtime, one-point loss to the best team in the state, Eastside Catholic. But if the Bullpups want to advance, they'll need to figure out how to break through the Chiefs' impenetrable defense. Upcoming games in football, it's Gonzaga Prep at Moses Lake, Freeman at Royal, and Othello at Stillicum. In soccer, it's Chiawana at Wenatchee, and in volleyball, Eastmont at Mead. This has been another presentation of Sideline Sports. I'm Jeff Slakey.